Myanmar is a pointer towards the rising militarism which we are witnessing in today's world. This systematic violation of democratic, democratic rights is manifesting itself in various forms in many Southeast Asian countries. And it is abetted by religious fundamentalism, patriarchal mindsets, and corporate greed. Now, without much ado, I would like to invite our first speaker for today, Debbie Strathart, a human rights defender and the coordinator of ASEAN Burma. Over to you, Debbie. Thank you so much, Shobna Shoba, and um, uh, uh, greetings of solidarity from Thailand, Bangkok, to all our friends in South Asia, but also to my sisters, Katie Nguyen and Lun Nguyen Tan, who are in the country which we are discussing now. Um, one of the things that we is very clear when people are asking, why did this coup happen? Uh, the coup happened because the National League for Democracy won a second term by a bigger majority, which would have enabled it and empowered it to actually um, push for stronger reforms. And we hoped that the NLD would be able to push for stronger economic justice as well as political justice in the country. For the first term of the NLD government, it was put in a position of having to cooperate and compromise with the military, which exerts huge political security and economic power in the country and is protected by a constitution that the military itself drafted. So what does this mean for us? Uh, this means that if we allow this junta, this new military junta, headed by Senior General Min Aung Lang to seize power without accountability. If we turn our backs on the people of Burma, and we're talking about the peoples of Burma in all their diversity, then we are also at risk of allowing the same, uh, same power grabs to persist in our entire region. What has been quite interesting to note is that even some police have now joined the civil disobedience movement, which is a nationwide movement, which has been inclusive of people from all walks of life, including, including the LGBT community. It's a, led, it's a youth led movement. And what is also important is that they understand this movement has said very clearly and we've heard their voice very clearly that po political, uh, political transformation is not sufficient. There has to be economic trans transformation. And by this, we already saw that there is a domestic boycott of products produced by military companies, that there is a strong call that there must be international sanctions targeting military companies that continue to provide an economic motivation for the military to hang on to power. These military companies like the Myanmar Economic Holdings and Myanmar Economic Corporation, Myanmar Oil and Gas Enterprise, which uh, are notorious because they used their ties to the military to violate people's rights on the ground, to grab lands and abuse people for economic profit. And that also prevented civilian businesses and small and medium enterprises from developing and from thriving because of this unfair, this unfair competition. So I'm, going, uh, I'm coming in here with an economic lens and understand with the, with the understanding that in Burma, Myanmar, the struggle for peace, for justice, and for human rights must also incorporate transitional justice in the form of economically just policies that aim to empower the people and also heal the harms that have been inflicted on minority groups, including the Rohingya, 
the Kachin, the, 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 the diverse communities in Northern Shan State and the Rakhine in Rakhine State who are also being targeted with atrocity crimes. And more recently, the Karen who, who are, have been turned into refugees and being attacked despite the fact that there's supposed to be a peace agreement on the ground. Before I finish, I just wanted to note that under this period of so-called transition, since 2011, the military regime enjoyed a budget increase of 180%. And at the in the same time, the number of military attacks that targeted civilians and harmed other civilians rose by 143%. We saw more war and more conflict targeting civilians, even despite the fact that there was that in, in the past year that there was a COVID pandemic affecting the whole community, the military still persisted and even started new offensives in the country. So what we are facing now is a crisis that requires the support and solidarity of all our brothers and sisters, our comrades and colleagues all over the world. But just as importantly in South Asia, which has had immensely important historical, political and cultural ties with the people of Burma. Thank you. Thank you very much, Debbie. And uh, I've heard that you have to go to another meeting also perhaps. So um, if there are any questions from the audience right now, if they want to ask Debbie, although we will have the, we will take up the questions later on also. Uh, Debbie, I wanted to know uh, if uh, there is, uh, the corporations are also involved in it. Do you see some sort of corporate capture going on and uh, abetting this uh, rise of military? The, the, there, is a, a, there is a sense of corporate capture in the sense that many of the, mil the military corporations have been calling the shots and positioned themselves from the very beginning. Before the, mili before the political transition in 2011, all of these military co corporations were actually state-owned enterprises that were run by the military. And any foreign investor that wanted to come in was required to go into a joint venture with these corporations. And these partnerships continued even during the time of transition and continued to cause a huge amount of suffering. And a lot of the laws and or either the laws themselves or the selective enforcement of laws favored these military companies. So the we, we are in a situation where, you know, under democracy, the parliament controls the military, but under Burma's so-called disciplined democracy, the constitution empowered the military to call the shots of the, in the parliament. They exercise effective veto power over constitutional amendments. They occupy 25% of the seats without being elected. And on top of that, um, there, were, there was also a military aligned party, which also lost more seats in the 2020 election and therefore added their voice to claim that there was an electoral fraud because they lost by a bigger majority to the NLD and to ethnic based parties. So when we talk about corporate capture, of course, there's corporate capture domestically by the military companies, but also there has been a reluctance by some of the transnational corporations to apply proper due diligence to ensure that they are not uh, involved directly or through their business relationships with atrocity crimes and systematic human rights violations on the ground. And now it's time for that to stop. It's time for us to reverse the situation. Thank okay. you. I, I'll be here for the next hour. Okay. So I'll stay oh, okay. as long as possible. Okay. okay, but just one more question. It is from Zafar Kidwai. And even I also wanted to ask you, Debbie, that uh, uh, we read often women are facing violence from army. Is it true? Because history is tainted where military uses violence on women. 
to suppress any and uh, any civil resistance movement thank you for your question zafa yes the first official ca casualty of this movement is a young woman who was shot dead in napidor uh, the Napidor is the military uh, designed and built new capital that was uh, set up in 2005. Mm -hmm. And during that time, uh, this, this capital was built so that the military could avoid being in Yangon where there was a lot of resistance and opposition from the, from the people. But even in the ivory towers or the, the fortress, uh, of, of Napido, civil servants, senior civil servants have joined the civil disobedience movement, including um, senior civil servants to the level of director general and deputy director general of various departments. So this has been a shock to the military. But in Napido yesterday, a young woman who was not even in the front of the, of the protest was uh, was shot uh, was shot and fatally wounded. She was taken to ICU and she passed away. Um, a friend of mine, Edith Mirante, has put on Twitter feed a series of cases where women in uh, Burma have have been killed by the military, including young women who were raped and killed by military uh, people. Women shot in the streets. And in the case of the Rohingya genocide, very severe and horrific atrocities targeting women. Women have always been targeted in this movement, whether or not they were protesting. Okay. Thank you. We'll take up more questions later on, Debbie. Thank you for that, because we have questions coming up. So our next speaker now is Kathy Wynn. Uh, Debbie mentioned her earlier also from Asia Pacific Network of Sex Workers. And she's the founding member of uh, ADA, the Myanmar Sex Workers Led Organization. Over to you, Katie. Thank you very much. And um, I think um, I'm very excited to be the, the part of the, this discussion as the show in the movement of solidarity of the, at the region and also the how we can be also the get the mood solidarity and then the movement in the, our region. I totally agree that what the previous speaker had said, if it is we accept for the one country, it will be go to the around the, our region. So let's say example, before I go to the my speech, uh, what I want to say is that, you know, is that let's say uh, for the sex worker related to the sex worker, we had the Swedish model. And some, some country have accepted for the Swedish model to charge their client to who are buying the sex. It is now coming to India and it is also coming to the other country for the like different model. So this is will be the also the one of the models that other people can copy and also other people can do the same predicts the what the military can do. That's be firstly, and I want to say, so I see is the current situation of the Myanmar and also the democracy and, and also the women, women are facing the violence. And during the past things from the January, uh, the first of February, what I'm seeing is that in this, the, the movement, the country are doing is the, the front line are the most of the front line, uh, the protector are the, the women. And, they have also either they are young or old, or you know, it's the many people, many of the women are in the front line protectors. So in the, the same thing I followed to that, uh, to yesterday we have the one of the girl was shoe and it, she was only the teenager. And this is also that that's why women are one woman becoming to women are the front line and they get more vulnerable. And then the, we need the society to protect the woman to, for the safety. So why I'm saying that is the in current situation of the, the Myanmar, uh, my perspective of the, the sex worker where I am working. So the previously last three years with the, our elected government, 
We're doing a lot of violence against sex worker project in Myanmar, which was the significant amount of success. But when we come into the, it's, it's now is controlling by the military. I do not accept that this is not, military is not the appointed for the, this position. They are crew, military crew. So they are we, they are not the appointed by the Burmese citizen or the Myanmar citizen, including the ethnic minority. They are not appointed. They are just the crew. And they, so in that case, what I want to say is that currently the women are the frontline protector and women are also the less protector by the society. You can see that yesterday in the Mandalay, uh, Mandalay which is our secondary biggest city, the women, uh, the, the, the authority are, 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 um, against the who are doing the protest, that was the woman. And she, you might saw the many of picture coming to the internet that, and her body was almost half a show, but these all the men police and they are just taking like her is the sexually not respectable in the public. So that's the, in this case, women are not safe. And also the many times that we see that um, the many of the women, including the sex worker, are they face the violence and they face including sexual violence, economic violence and mental violence and they have lack of protection for the, those people. So we as the sex worker community where we are working, and now we are also working with the feminist group that to how we can do protect the gender-based violence from the those. Stay, we, uh, we hope that, that our alleged win government will be protect and they will be changed the law to protect the women. But this military will never go to protect the woman ever. So in my experience, when I was in, involved in the ADA student politics, and I, I, I'm telling them my personal story. And when I did, uh, um, I got the information the military came in to arrest me. Then the, my, who are the, my fellow, they are saying that I need to be shift from the, my home to somewhere to hide. Then I went to the Northern part of the Myanmar where my auntie was staying. You know, these army people, they rape to the people, they rape to the women and they come to get the, whatever access are available for them. And also the, how they can get people to be that they are sovereign. So this 20 year was the, my experience on that. And we cannot accept that what military are currently doing. We people in Myanmar, more than 54 million vote for the elected party because of we want democracy and we want the full human right and we want to be fair. So I'm saying the experience of mine, the first things, first of February, when I go to bed, I have the tension. What can be happen next? When I wake up in the middle of the night, I also have the tension, what is new come up? In the morning also, I look at the what is going on. So we are supporting to the democracy because of, we do not want this tension. We want to be peacefully working with the, our uh, goal to achieve the hell and our goal to achieve the protect the woman, our goal to achieve the Whatever we say is for the sustainable development goal. You know, it's the worldwide people are saying that you and I are also saying that our oh, sustainable goal. But when this crisis come, where who will protect the, this sustainable goal? Who will protect the universal health coverage? I don't see anything the army will be interested to do on the dose for the citizen or for the people. That's why I'm saying that it is not only for the Myanmar. It is for the region, it is for the country where people do not have the democracy. So we need to think about the democracy is for the every people should be deserved. And democracy is for the all the country there, 
we need it. If we want to reduce the violence, if we want to increase their country economy is better, and if we want to do the women are safe. I think that's, I can tell now, what if they had the question, I can give the answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katie, and we are with you there. And it's that it is not just a problem of one country, but all of us in other countries are also facing problems in different ways. And women are everywhere and always at the receiving end. Even in times of peace, they are at the receiving end of many atrocities. Uh, forget about what happens during an, a military uprising. So yes, we will come to be back to you with many more questions. And we now have Luin Luin Than, a health justice activist from Mandalay, Myanmar. Welcome, Luin Luin. And please share your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Shubha. Thank you for inviting me. And yes, uh, as uh, Ms. Deborah and Ms. KB already mentioned, a lot. And yeah, I also would like to talk, uh, you know, uh, not only for uh, women and girls and children, I mean, for the everywhere, the justice need in every places. So injustice anywhere is a threat to, uh, you know, uh, justice everywhere. So why we, you know, uh, reject the, the military coup is uh, we want justice and democracy because uh, you know, it's a crime commitment against democracy and justice because uh, 2020 election is uh, you know, um, fair and just elections and uh, a lot of uh, you know, uh, over 80% uh, you know, uh, votes elected, uh, you know, uh, and then wins. I'm not from the political party, but uh, you know, uh, the governments have to think about the, you know, uh, our votes, the people uh, went out for voting uh, during the pandemic time, you know, uh, it was, uh, they should have, and you can see in many uh, published places, I mean, in news and, you know, people went out because they want democracy, you know, and just it. So, military given pressure on now uh, UEC. UEC is also uh, why they, uh, uh, when they took uh, power, uh, you know, is uh, they also now given the pressure on UEC. UEC is the Union Election Committee because Union Election Committee is also impartial and, you know, uh, they can't vote in front of the third party, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, domestic election observer. We also have from the different CSO and different uh, organization in front of them. And also we, uh, you know, how to say uh, our plans, you know, it is, it can be cheap. Uh, that's why uh, this is the, how we process a systematic way uh, the democracy transition process. So uh, the elected government uh, you know, uh, the democratically way the you know, um, this terms is the uh, Loto and the Piramsu Loto, where we set us and formed by the elected members of parliaments and our democratic uh, transition have to carry on for next uh, five year terms. And, but as you know, at that time, military coups and seize power and, you know, it's also, uh, you know, break the 2008 constitution because in 2008 constitution, uh, according to the law at uh, 201, uh, in chapter five, uh, you know, um, the, the, uh, the, 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 in the, only in the emergency case, the, you know, uh, bind the transfer of the presidents, the forming of the, uh, National Defense and Security Council needs to form, but you know, the presidents, uh, women haven't signed no approval, but, you know, uh, but they force and, you know, seize power. Um, how to say it is like a, a treason. Yeah, it's kinds of the uh, crime against national security. And, and you know, uh, detain the 
uh, current president because it is already elected and you know uh, landslide winning. I'm not from the NLD party, but in a democratic way, uh, you know, uh, they also there's also an opposition party. USGB also have uh, only uh, you know a vote. Uh, it's already announced voting list in front of the third party. So, I mean, this is a crimes and is a treason that the military coups. So that's why a lot of demonstration peacefully. And you can see uh, everywhere, you know, uh, demonstrate uh, our civilians demonstrated and still ongoing, starting from the uh, 4th February. Because uh, according to the constitution, uh, 72 hours we have to wait at the uh, February 1st. And then uh, we want the, you know, a table discussion from the side. If, uh, they have intentionally uh, genuine willing from the Tamaro. But uh, I mean, Tamaro have uh, not, uh, they don't have the genuine intention because the election, I mean, before the election, uh, there's uh, 14 days before the election, voting lists are, you know, checked and managed and uh, listed out. And on that day, but at that time, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, citizens, uh, parties, political parties have an right to amend and you know check the voting list. Just uh, only the that is the reason they would like to you know cook the powers from the uh, civilian governments. That's why they give the reasons of the you know. Uh, in the voting, but that is, this is not the reasonable. That's why our civilians couldn't assess. And, you know, uh, one year of the main online, Jonathan Shui main online uh, detaining and arranging next election again, because we, according to the, you know, um, how to say, um, experience in 1988 and 2010, at that time, they also, promise and bet uh, in the last 18 years, uh, I mean, 1988 at that time, uh, they only, you know, uh, ran, uh, you know, a one party election. And, you know, at that time, State Peace and Development Council uh, without you know, voting from the our side civilians, but they, you know, they rules uh, for, uh, 18 years at that time, and and they start 1962. You know, um, from that time, military coups in different versions and different styles, and they have a lot of strategy. That's why people, uh, you know, we don't believe anymore on that. You know, uh, that's why we civil society organization, and even now, uh, civil disobedience campaign movements are involved the whole country. And this afternoon, you know, uh, our uh, Mandalay regions also uh, the one that the you know uh, the uh, how to say the whole regions the, the you know uh, one of the whole regions who involved in the uh, civil disobedience movement and other regions also uh, fully join now you know, um, many places join by the police as the double mention. So from my side is, uh, yeah, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, demand our elected government, uh, you know, uh, to release immediately the state councilor and the president and, you know, uh, yeah. And, and, and things about the human rights, because even the military, uh, you know, uh, I had that the uh, uh accept the Rohingya back, but this is his playing card, you know, uh, because uh, nobody, uh, UN Council 15 countries not stand by his, I mean, his side, and then he playing card, and but you know, injustice, in a place is, uh, you know, uh, he will, he will not do what he said, you know. Uh, so that that is the that is why we ongoing.
demonstrating peacefully and even, uh, you know, uh, one lady showed nine, 19 years old uh, yesterday and ongoing process is that, you know, uh, we were ongoing, our citizens were ongoing the civil disobedience movement and the peacefully demonstration and her, uh, you know, uh, the civilian governments, the winning government, we don't want next election and you know uh, they have to give back you know uh, restoring the democratic democracy and uh, this energy party winning energy because uh you know um according to uh the case and the history the military found the uh, uh, usdb party uh usdb party is also you know um you know uh, how to say like like the like the, they are backsides from the military and military supporting because mil some militaries involved and uh, they running in the political but they lose in the 2020 election nobody like their party so that is the result and even the a lot of you know, protections and countrywide protections and countrywide election is the result and the people willing and that is our rights. And yeah, that is the, what <laughs> happening in Myanmar. And yes, that is what. Thank, thank you. you. All our wishes, good wishes are with you. And I thank still you. have a lot of faith in the power of civil disobedience movements. And I'm sure the battle will be won from uh, not the battle but the movement will be, uh, will win the uh, movement will win battles are for militaries to fight and uh, we fight with movements so thank, thank you very much thank and you. i now welcome uh, miss uh, nome uh, uh, mutra and she is a karen by ethnicity and is providing technical support to the karen national union peace process to establish a federal democracy in burma and uh, Please forgive me for my uh, bad pronunciation of your name. So be welcome and please share your thoughts. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for getting me. Uh, even though it's the last minute, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of this discussion because I think it's uh, very uh, important. Uh, uh, aside from what uh, the previous uh, three panelists uh, had spoken, uh, I, I would like to uh, I would like to speak from a little bit different uh, perspective. Uh, I think uh, the, the elections, uh, the elections, the 2008 constitution, those are uh, still uh, as we protest, uh, as the people of Burma continue to protest against the coup and also uh, the the aftermath of the military conducts, uh, they continue to protest as we speak. Uh, along the protests, I think the discussions are ongoing. Where do we go from here on? You know, how, what direction do we take? Uh, and uh, I, I, uh, there are different uh, various, um, of course, uh, school of thoughts. Uh, people think about this and that as a strategic approach, approach, different strategic approaches. But I think uh, uh, I, for one, I studied constitutional law for almost 10 years. Uh, I, for one, I think uh, the minute uh, the, 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 uh, the Damaro, Myanmar Damaro, uh, uh, staged uh, the coup, uh, they violated their own constitution that they drafted and no one in the country except themselves uh, liked. Uh, and all along the time, including the NLD and all other opposition organizations, democratic forces, ethnic um, uh, armed organizations, ethnic political parties, and everyone has called for the either uh, major amendments of the constitution so that it could uh, be uh, more, uh, it, could, it could be uh, leaning toward a more federal democratic uh, society or overhaul of the constitution and draft a whole new federal constitution. Those are the call, those have been the calls. And uh, so the 2008 constitution is being violated. Uh, on one hand, it, it, it's not surprising, right? Uh, but then uh, realistically speaking, many people who have, uh, who have to live under that constitution, uh, the violation of the constitution by the, the, the very people who drafted it, 
uh, I think uh, in that more very moment uh, from constitutional law perspective, uh, uh, the, the constitution was annulled. You know? uh, it's, it, it, it died effectively to me. So I, I, um, when the constitution died, uh, I think uh, we, as the people of the country, what we have to do is think about a new constitution. Uh, we think about a new constitution, and I think it's a chance um, for the people of the country uh, to also think about, think, think also, we, have, we must unequivocally uh, denounce the military coup and military rule. Uh, by all means, but at the same time, I would like to call, uh, I would like to uh, raise that probably this is also a time for us to think outside the box and to think beyond this very dark moment. Uh, we, uh, in, in the country, uh, we had a military coup for uh, 1951, 1962, 1988, now 2021. So at least we had uh, officially three, uh, four coups, uh, four, coup, uh, four times military coup in the country. But in many parts of the countries, the military effectively ruled, took over and ruled in many parts of the countries, uh, in the eastern part, southeastern, and uh, in the uh, in the western uh, part of the countries, military have all along the time since independence uh, ruled the countries, occupied the countries, ruled the countries, and they, it, those places were under or have been under military rule. So I think uh, we can look at the current situation and uh, may, uh, we can, while we are resisting military rule and we are rejecting the coup, we, we, we denounce the coup, we should also as a country look then how do we move forward? Where, which direction do we go? Uh, I think uh, we, I would, uh, I would uh, like to look at it that way. And I, I also think that from constitutional law perspective, if this constitution did not allow us, the people, a country with diverse communities, diverse cultures, Every, many di uh, the, the diversity in the country is huge. And in this country, we, we certainly need a constitution that would accommodate the diversity so that we won't, ha we won't have to repeat the history by fighting. If, you, if, we don't have, if we don't fight the military dictator, we have to fight the civilian dictators. And I think we, we, I'm sick of that. And we are, uh, many of the people in the country are sick of it. So once and for all, we reject and denounce the, this military, military coup, but we also should look forward to how we can overcome this and we can, uh, we can create possibility, we can design possibility for, our fu for the children of our, fu the future of our children so that they won't have to get back into the same thing uh, repeatedly. Uh, for now, I don't think uh, my generation, I started, uh, I started entering the movement for democracy and change in the country when I was 19. And I'm now 49. I think uh, uh, I can sp speak a few, you know, uh, truth to that, that if we could not look past uh, the the uh, the current situation as opportunity to overcome uh, to uh, opportunity to overcome dictatorship of all kinds, and if we are not going to think about having a constitution that would allow all of us to coexist peacefully, I think. Uh, we may, we will get past this time. This time, this too shall pass. But we are likely to get into uh, the, the 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 cycle. So I I, I think uh, it's very difficult. One of the most difficult times in this uh, in the history of this country. Uh, we are resisting. We are defying. We are fighting. Uh, uh, to pass this uh, moment, uh, this dark moment. But I think uh, I should also call that we should not uh, allow ourselves to get stuck uh, in, 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 the, in this moment that the, the, the election result and, the, and 
I think the military is smart to set it up so that we we rejected we all along the time we denounced the constitution. Now the military set it up so that we are going to get ourselves back right into that uh, bogus constitution that would not that would never. Uh, give a chance to federal democracy to blossom. So I, uh, for tonight, uh, that's my different uh, point of view that I would like to uh, uh, present. Uh, I, I, I think uh, this could uh, create a lot of debates uh, and disagreements and I, I stand, uh, I, I welcome question, uh, but I, uh, I also stand with the people of Burma uh, uh, in, this, in this fight. We, we must uh, pass this dark hour, but it is not just passing the dark hour. It is uh, making sure that the, after the dark hour, we are not going to fall into the pit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, and I agree with you that this too shall pass. As, uh, and in Hindi, you know, I, there is a poem, there are a few lines, I will, I'm tempted to uh, repeat them here. And, uh, and it says, ye gam ke aur char din sitam ke aur char din ye ye din guzar bhi jayenge guzar gaye hazar din which means that these four days of darkness and misery will pass as have thousands other days of happiness have passed so these two will pass and again there will be happiness so i think that that's a very positive attitude and we'll come to you come back to you with more questions uh, later on how do I pronounce your name? Please tell me that so I don't pronounce it incorrectly again. Me u, me u. Me, me, me u. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I can see we have with us uh, Mona Sabela of ESCR Net, uh, which is an international network of economic, social, and cultural rights. And uh, uh, many of the organizations which people here are representing, they are part of ESCR Net. So Mona, we would like to hear from you. You are the best person to talk about the global sol solidarity on behalf of Global Solidarity Network of People's Movements. Yes, Mona. Sorry, I, I, uh, I'm having some internet trouble uh, and I didn't hear, but, um, but I guess it was invitation. Yes, please speak. Yes, Mona, An invitation Great. for you to speak, yes. Apologies for um, bad internet connection on my end. And thank you very much for all the information shared and uh, May U and uh, Debbie and uh, uh, you know other um, colleagues who intervened, really powerful interventions that really, um, I learned personally a lot from you and uh, I'm drawing a lot of strength from you as well. And uh, a lot of hope for uh, a better future. Um, from the network side, uh, of course, Debbie and, and Bobby and Shobha know very well as members of ESCR network, um, you know, we, we operate um, as, as our members uh, lead us to and guide us. And so we're really happy to see these, uh, these events of solidarity. Uh, you know, there was one uh, last week, uh, with some uh, uh, Sri Lankan and, uh, and Indian solidarity uh, uh, groups coming together that of course, uh, Bobby and Herman on this call as well had uh, organized together um, with the Fisher Folk Group and, uh, and uh, CNS. And, and I think, uh, you know, continuing on today with this call, it's really inspiring to see um, so many voices uh, of, of movements on the ground speaking out about uh you know women's violence uh or violence against women at this moment and and really how women are at the forefront of a lot of what is going on whether um in india or in um or in burma myanmar uh, and throughout the whole uh uh throughout the whole world really um, and I really appreciated Debbie speaking about corporate capture as well. I think it's a huge uh, uh, issue that we are facing uh, globally. And I think, uh, you know, the, the, the role that the military uh, companies are playing, but also the role that the arms companies are playing in shaping our different policies around the world um, and shaping economies of violence, essentially, 
that are uh, promoting um, undemocratic uh, action as we are seeing at the moment. So, um, so yeah, just expressing our solidarity further and uh, yes, Yarnet is, is very ready to support uh, further with any messages um, or events. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mona. Uh, uh, our, uh, we had a speaker in Dr. Sandeep Pandey, uh, whom all of you must be knowing very well, but uh, perhaps he's a little late in coming because he's involved with lot many uh, things and meetings and movements in India itself. So uh, we will wait for him. And meanwhile, we will have the solidarity messages from human rights activists who have joined us today from different countries. Uh, I would request them to please keep your responses brief so that everyone gets a chance to speak and then we can take up some questions also uh, in the end. So we would first like to hear from Harman Kumara, leader of National Fisheries Solidarity Movement of Sri Lanka. Thank you, Soba, for this opportunity and also Bobby for CNS. Uh, First of all, I would like to uh, extend our deep solidarity with the peoples of Burma. Uh, secondly, we feel and we share the uh, your sorrows, the sufferings, what uh, you people in Burma is feeling today. Because we as Sri Lankan, uh, Sri Lankans, uh, we have been, uh, we had been there uh, under military uh, more than 30 years, and we felt how the people's rights being violated. And it's very right that you are facing, as the previous speaker said, four times under military coup. So that's very clear. At the same time, today in Sri Lanka, we are facing very serious uh, uh, dictatorship the military dictatorship uh, in the uh, elected with the uh, democratic process. So that, uh, the way that they are operating is very clear that we are not only demanding the political justice, it's also the economic justice under them because it's not civil and political rights being violated. It's also economic, social, cultural rights are being violated because even a small business, even a, a farm, the land, the water bodies, the transportation, and many of the things are under uh, military. And they are running all the uh, bi uh, business of this COVID, uh, COVID prevention uh, thing. So we can feel and we can uh, understand how you people are feeling about this situation. And we are really uh, glad to see and command that the women and also the uh, youth, you are the forefront of this struggle. So we really appreciate and we command you your involvement. And with that, I should say the, the right perspective as JB and the previous speaker said, you are really in the right direction because we need a constitution which all the uh, small minorities also having a space and voice. So that sort of, uh, sort of political uh, platform should be there and we hope that you will have a new constitution because we know in the past, like uh, genocide of Rohingya, which was under the democratic, democratically elected government uh, is responsible. So we all are having real concern about all these issues. So as the previous speaker said, we are really with you in this struggle and we are deeply in solidarity with you for the justice, economically, socially, culturally, as well as politically. So uh, we are with you, we assure our, our support, we extend our solidarity with two friends, our comrades uh, from Sri Lanka uh, to you, your struggle, our uh, uh, Burmese uh, people, you are in, your, in your struggle. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we now have Nurul Islam Hasib from Bangladesh. Uh, he's a senior journalist of the Bangladesh Post. Yes, Nuru. Oh. So, no, thank you. Uh, thank you, Shubha, for giving me the opportunity. So, I'll be very brief. Uh, first of all, I will just express my uh, solidarity with the 
democracy loving people of Myanmar who are on the street uh, protesting the military rule. So my prayers for them, my prayers for the well-being of our neighbor, Myanmar is a, our neighbor. We in Bangladesh, uh, we people, uh, we journalists, uh, we expect democracy in Burma for two reasons, I would say. Uh, first, uh, we are democracy and we love democracy. And second, which is very important for us, is to get the Rohingya crisis issue resolved. And without sustainable and full democracy, I am saying full democracy because what we have seen in the last few years in Myanmar were not democracy with military holding the key power and running the show when it comes to make key decisions. So, so we want full democracy in Myanmar. So my personal belief is that due to the 50 years of military regime, we are now facing this Rohingya problem. In other words, uh, because of 50 years of uh, military rule, there are people in the world who are stateless because military robbed their citizenship rights. So, so I think, uh, and it's, it's uh, good to know uh, from, from our colleagues in Burma that the movement against the military takeover is gaining momentum. And it's now inclusive with people of all strata joining the activists. So there are also calls to boycott goods uh, produced by army. So I hope that good sense will prevail and military will uh, hand over the power to the political parties who won the last elections. So thank you. Thank you, Nurul. Uh, next we have our friend Wali Heather from Pakistan. He's uh, from Roots for Equity and represents Pakistan Kisan Mazdoor Tehreek and Asian Peasant Coalition. Over to you, Wali Saab. Uh, thank you, Shobhaji. Uh, these technological glitches, you know, <laughs> made us uh, in challenges. Huh? These new normal are, are not, not you know, no more going to be a normal for us forever. Because yeah. we people in the third world, you know, don't know these high sci-fi, sci-fi technologies, but trying to coping up with the situation. Thank you very much, Shobha, Bobby, and uh, yeah. all the friends to inviting me to this very important uh, yeah. solidarity event. And, uh, you know, this kind of a uh, very tragic moment for our Myanmar, uh, Bur Burma's uh, people that... Uh, uh, we, we see a military coup there. And this is a sign of uh, fascism throughout the world and the hegemony of militarized forces. We always see, especially in our region, Pakistan is uh, nothing other than like that. You all are know that more than uh, 50 years we have been ruled by uh, military as well. But uh, though it was a, you know, in, 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 uh, Burma, it was a, a, a popular government, but was not having a good uh, track record, especially with respect to the Rohingya community. And this is this, uh, the, all the demo democratic forces need to understand that whenever they are in power, they need to serve their people. They need to uh, govern in a way that people feel safe and sound. And uh, uh, and that that was uh, when we not been you know we witnessed in uh, during the uh, popular regime in in uh, uh, Burma, but uh, uh, the 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 kind of uh, the leader uh, Burma's leader the she had fought a, a lot and have a consistent resistance against the military regime. And even that, that her struggle have been uh, recognized worldwidely. And, but uh, we see that again, after having a constitutional role in, in, uh, in, the, in the governance by the military, even that they don't accept these political actors to rule in their country. And just before one day, uh, uh, before the convening of the, um, the government, they have uh, they have coup in, in in the country. 
which is which is really very alarming and the the kind of um, status emergency status uh, is no longer accept, accept, acceptable to any of the human rights activists and this especially in the modern world and um, we we uh, we need to we need uh, the need for a just and lasting peace is uh, become vital today uh, to to achieve just and lasting peace there is a need for a people solidarity and mass movement unless or until all people all across the world come together and resist and find a way where aspir uh, people's aspiration will be fulfilled in our re regions in all the uh, especially in the third world uh, we will be in such kind of situation we will remain there and uh, we stand up with our uh, uh, mm, uh, uh, we stand with the people of Burma and demand for an immediate lifting of a state of emergency and restore all kind of uh, communication uh, which have been banned uh, now in in uh, in Burma. And we also uh, hope that uh, uh, there will be a constitutional uh, constitutional constitution, true constitution will be prevail in 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 Burma and people of Burma will be freed soon. And uh, there, there is a need for intercontinental, regional, sub-regional solidarity uh, regarding uh, this fascist regime. We, we are witnessing what happening in, uh, in elsewhere, especially in Philippines. Uh, we are witnessing the farmer struggle in India. Uh, we are getting a lot, of, a lot of inspiration from farmers movement in India, how the farmers in India are resisting uh, even in the in that kind of a cold, and they are not uh, even uh, thinking to give up their their hope. That is a real inspiration for all of us. And the Burma's people are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, behind that. And they will also get a freedom and long-lasting peace in in their life and in their country. And ho let's hope for good for all of us in future. But this is not possible without a consistent uh, mass movement and solidarity among people's uh, movement around the globe, especially in uh, subcontinent in, in, in South Asia. I thank you, Shoba and Bobby, uh, for inviting me for this very important solidarity webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Wali Bhai was talking about technical glitches, which we all face. But what is more scary these days is how governments are using the internet and social media as a weapon to thwart and block movements of people by blocking the internet availability. At the slightest pretext, they cut off the internet connection from that particular area or city. And I think that that is a very scary part. Uh, we have more voices from Pakistan. We also have with us today peace activist Saida Deep, and she's founder of Institute for Peace and Secular Studies, Lahore, Pakistan. So she will, uh, she will share her brief message now. Over to you, Saidaji. Hello, can Hi. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very yeah. clearly. Uh, thank you, Bobby and Shobha for inviting me. I'm sorry that due to this internet issue, I cannot connect the camera, this is, but I hope you can hear my voice. Yes, we it, can hear you, it, yes, that's yeah. fine. It, yes. it being, a being citizen of Pakistan, since it's all of you, you are aware that since our independence, our country has been mostly run by the military and martial laws and all that. It, it, my friend from Sri Lanka, I forgot the name. It, whatever he was saying, I, I can relate each and everything uh, this, to myself. But the problem is we, we don't have a freedom to express like it is very fashionable and cool to criticize the military dictatorship in other countries but in my own country we cannot raise voice because if we speak then people got missing it and sometimes your parents are looking for you uh, for uh, years it, and it, it, it like most of the, the people in Pakistan who who are democratic, who believe in democratic values, they, they are upset 
what happened in Myanmar, and uh, we are really, it's, it's, our heart and soul is with all the people in Myanmar and people, particularly in South Asia, most of us, we are not really enjoying the democracy, even if there is democracy. It, and I, I really hope that a time comes when we, we are free, all of us, and we have this power and courage to uh, say, <laughs> to speak. It, and I don't know, uh, as I'm telling you that we don't have a lot of freedom to, <laughs> like I can't criticize my country, whatever is happening here and what was happening. So, it, but I'm very positive it, this farmers movement in India that is kind of source of, of inspiration for a lot of people in South Asia, that peaceful resistance and non-violent people, they are sitting and with uh, determination and uh, confidence. And uh, I, I would say that we should overcome, overcome someday and that's all I wanted to say. And thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It is an honor to be part of this discussion. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Saida ji. And indeed, we shall overcome someday. <laughs> and I'm reminded of those beautiful and ever, ever uh, green lines. Uh, we now have from Pakistan, Professor Abdul Hamid Nair, who's a peace activist and a physicist too. Over to you, Nair Saab. Thank you very much, Shivaji. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, it is indeed a privilege to be with you in this uh, nice company. Um, and um, my, my compatriots have already expressed uh, the feelings that we have uh, uh, on, on this particular uh, uh, occasion. Um, Pakistani peace movements, Pakistani movements, uh, rights movements have already expressed concern at the military takeover in uh, Myanmar uh, and they have condemned. And as um, Saida Deep said, we have every reason to be very worried about military takeovers. We have been ruled by the military for a very, very long time and they may not be uh, directly running at this time, but we all know that they are behind the curtain and they are moving. Um, they, are the, they are the force of uh, political move, uh, political, politi politic politics uh, from, from behind the scene. Um, we also know that uh, prolonged military rules, military rules, what, whatever their duration, but since we have experienced them for a long time. For long military rules are very injurious to nations. And therefore we are worried about Myanmar. We just heard that Myanmar has had four episodes of military rules, uh, nearly like, like Pakistan. And Pakistan has been badly hurt by military rules in the country. They have dragged us into wars with neighbors. They have dragged us into uh, atrocity, commit, commitment of atrocities to our own people um, in the former East Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh, now in Balochistan, now in Sin, or whatever, and in uh, all these places. They have dragged us into the, 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 into, into the war in Afghanistan, raging in Afghanistan. So, and therefore, they have actually bled us as well in this, in this particular process. So military rules are bad. And therefore, when it comes to thinking about Myanmar being uh, ruled again by military, we just pray that the Myanmar people survive this onslaught, come out victorious, restore their democracy, and let, let, not, let them not come in again. For example, in Pakistan now, we have actually amended our constitution and made it mandatory death sentence for anyone who uh, takes over the government illegally for a military takeover. It is now a mandatory uh, death sentence. But then 
They have in the meantime become so powerful that they are controlling everything from behind the screen. Uh, they are dangerous and we hope that they survive this time, they, 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 this rule, and we hope they can come back and restore democracy and then their democracy flourishes over there. Thank you very much for in, this invitation and these are the few words that I had I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Nayar Saab. And from Pakistan, we now move to Nepal. Uh, I invite Kalpana Acharya, Editor-in-Chief of Health TV Nepal, to convey her message, please. Uh, thank you, Sabaji. Thank you so much. Uh, namaste and good evening, uh, all of you. I would like to thank organizing team and all panelists for having me on this panel discussion to sue my solidarity for people of Myanmar. I have uh, many friends in Myanmar, so I'm sending my solidarity and on behalf of our Nepali media friends too. Uh, actually, I don't have much to say uh, here. Our friends and Myanmar people are in difficult time. I stand with them for free press and democracy, freedom of expression, and strongly no more military coup. Here, I want to show my solidarity and demand for the restoration of democracy and freedom. Likewise, I strongly demand to stop using violence against protesters, including our journalist friends. They should respect the result of election. I think they should respect what they got. Being a health journalist here, I just want to say uh, my big concern is health status of Myanmar too. Uh, I think Myanmar and Nepal's economic status is uh, similar. I think so. Myanmar has progressed a lot in health sector, uh, like Nepal, including maternal mortality and other sector too. But uh, here, military government cannot meet these uh, health target goals um, because they are always against the freedom and empowerment and welfare of the society. That's why uh, to achieve the health target goals and improve the health status of Myanmar people, there should be the democratic society. There is no option and they must respect the election and they uh, should uh, respect the uh, election's results too. Uh, saying this, Soba, um, I strongly stand with the Myanmar people and our media friends of Myanmar. Uh, saying this, I'm with you. I want to say I'm with you and uh, we always with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kalpana, for your strong words and for your hopeful words. Uh, we have another voice from Nepal, uh, Daya Sagar Shreshta, who's from the National Campaign for Sustainable Development. Yes, Daya Sagar. If, if you're there. Okay, I think Daya is not there right now. So we come back to India and now I invite Ankit Goel, convener of the Eco-Socialist Front and host of the ongoing Satyagraha discussion series, which is taking place in India uh, to give his message. Um, thank you, Shabaji. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible, but a little shaky connection, but yes, you are audible. Please speak. Hello. We have lost you. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, thank you, Shobaji. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, uh, thanks for inviting me, but uh, actually, I am more of an uh, audience uh, on this platform. Uh, in any ways, I was I read about Myanmar in 2017 uh, about Rohingyas. I came to know about the I would say uh, the mismanagement in Myanmar uh, through Rohingyas. The Rohingyas are the most persecuted society, and the Buddhist population is uh, in Myanmar is uh, somehow uh, uh, leading to the persecution of the uh, uh, Rohingyas. And there only I read an article in which they were saying that uh, basically the uh, 
uh, uh, uh, the Prime Minister is the missile. There's a military, a lot of military military interference in Myanmar, in uh, in governance of Myanmar. And uh, presently, what we are facing out right now in Myanmar is just the after effect of that. The military has taken control uh, of the democracy in Myanmar, which is to be uh, to be honest, is quite sad. And uh, I'm, I'm um, and it's it's nice to be on on this plat platform and uh, listen to all the eminent panelists who are uh, directly involved in that and fighting for the democracy, democratic rights in Myanmar. Uh, so, and uh, talk about solidarity. Uh, solidarity is always with the people, not only in the South Asia. You know, every every person who is uh, facing some kind of exploitation or issue. So my solidarity remains with that uh, with that uh, person. So uh, thank you, Shobhaji, and thank you, Babaji, for uh, uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, speak few words on this day. We are really honored to have with us Arundhati Dhuru, a gender justice activist and a feminist leader, also very closely involved with Narmada Bachao Andolan, and she's also a convener of National Alliance of People's Movements. Uh, uh, Arundhati ji, would you share your thoughts, please? I, I, I'm really here to listen to the people, of course. <laughs> Your, solidarity your, with these people of Panama. Your Hello. message. Yeah. Yes, your message we stand solidarity. with the solidarity. I, I was not. I was not expecting that I'll be allowed. Oh. So uh, maybe after some time, you know, when I listen to the, of course, I stand with the solidarity. And any one of us who fight for the democratic rights are completely against the, you know, the military uh, imposition or any repressive regime in any of the state. We stand with the human rights of not only Myanmar but all the people who ever are fighting in the world. And Myanmar has seen a lot of difficulty and up and down. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we were waiting. We are still waiting for Dr. Sandeep Pandey. If he'll be there, he will speak. Otherwise. Uh, as of now, so we will uh, yes. then I stand with the solidarity, but I'm here more to listen. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, but we but we need uh, your encouragement and voices of people. Yeah, from uh, yeah let me listen yeah. for some time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because this, uh, we have had the speakers who have already spoken. Uh, so now we open uh, uh, for any comments or questions from the audience. Uh, and anybody who would like to make a comment from the audience also. And there are some questions already. Uh, there is a question for um, uh, just a moment. Let me see that. Uh, we have a question for uh, I'm just taking the question. Yes, there's a question for uh, Mayu uh, that, uh, and also for Debbie, if Debbie is there, that uh, do you? Uh, do you want, do you foresee or you wish for a change in the constitution of Burma? And also what is the role of regional forums and international forums like the UN to ensure federal democracy in Myanmar? Uh, <clears throat> I yes. think uh, yes. Debbie left. Uh, yes, so yes, 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 please. The uh, yes, uh, we we want uh, we want a new we want constitutional change, and not only we want. If this country is to have any future, this country needs a new constitution. Uh, we, I, uh, I, as a constitution, uh, as a student of constitutional law, we I believe that um, constitution is making a constitution is like building a house that you are going to live in. And if it is just your, your own plan, it's one thing, but it's not, it still has, it will still have some issue. But if it is uh, a house to be lived in uh, by many people or as much diverse as uh, our country Burma is, we suddenly need a constitutional process, uh, constitutional making process that uh, uh, that uh, involves everyone uh, at various levels. And only then 
we can rest assured that this constitution will, uh, we, we will be able to uphold uh, this constitution, we will be willing to protect this constitution, we will be willing to oblige ourselves to, to protect the constitution. So we need that kind of constitution if this country is to have any any future, uh, any future at all, any positive future at all. And I think uh, the current, um, the current constitution, uh, the, the, the 2008 constitution, not only that uh, it does not guarantee, uh, it does not have space for diversity, diverse, uh, diversity to uh, people, to uh, people with different uh, cultural, social backgrounds to, uh, to coexist peacefully. Uh, this constitution entrenched, like Debbie had uh, left uh, in her comments, um, uh, the constitution entrenched military power permanently. So this, uh, for that reason, uh, we need to, we need a new constitution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, May. Uh, what is the role of regional forums and international forums like UN? Could you please uh, come to that? Yes. And I, uh, is, uh, sorry. Uh, so I think uh, if we, if we, I think it's very important right now because uh, as we all read it on uh, social media and all other news available, generation. Generation uh, Z or Generation Z, you know, depending on or what English you speak, right? So Generation, uh, this uh, the young people are coming up on the street, uh, onto the streets, and protesting, denouncing military dictatorship, denouncing military coup, and demanding for democratic, uh, demo their democratic rights. And I think this is. Uh, very important for international community, our friends, to listen to the voices of uh, the, the people in the country very carefully. Uh, I think uh, it's very tempting to look at uh, from uh, aside, standing aside, and to look at uh, the country. And we can theorize. We can theorize the what might be the solution, what might be the best solution for this country of this type, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think the most important thing, and perhaps the most difficult thing, is to really listen. Uh, pay attention to the voices of the people in the country, what they are asking for, what they want, what they are, where they are going. I think that's very important. And if you look at and if you listen to the voices in the country, you will you will hear. Yes, uh, we denounce military coup. We we'll, we denounce uh, military. We reject dictatorship of all kinds. This is what uh, the cries. This is the cries that you can hear from the uh, the the protest. But also. Uh, people are calling for new constitution. People are calling for abol uh, the uh, abolishment of the current constitution. And people are calling for the establishment of federal union. And they call it because they experienced 70 years of civil war in the country that hurts them so uh, beyond words. Uh, many people in the cities probably do not uh, experience it firsthand, the effect of the war. But in the long run, and uh, as far as our future is concerned, because of the 70 years of the war, uh, the civil war in the country, it just, it legitimizes the existence of the military, strong military. Uh, and as Debbie stated, 180% uh, 100, military budget increase. That's unacceptable in a country where healthcare is below uh, standard, uh, below internet. You know, it's it's you can you can think about situation in the country and everything is so unacceptable, and uh, the, it is in that situation because uh, we have this uh, military expen military expenditure that is sky high. And they spend uh, that much because they justify their spending with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uprising in the country, like the ethnic minorities uh, be, uh, being destructive elements, etc. all kinds of accusation. So this, uh, I think international community will have to listen, listen to the voices and uh, help, uh, help if, when helps are to be provided, I think we, we, we should provide the, the helps 
uh, according to the needs, according to the aspiration of the very people who will have to live in that country and put up with whatever system that comes to place. So I think uh, the responsibility of the international community is to work with the people in the country designing their future, designing their constitution, designing a society that they want to live in, and I, instead of uh, imposing. And the only way we could probably do that effectively is to listen to them right now. And for now, uh, right now, I say, because uh, right now, this is the first time you can hear, uh, you, you get to hear from younger generations uh, who, came, who came out and protested. And it is not because they don't fear for their life, but it is, their, it is because they fear for their future. Uh, they, 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 so I think uh, in, uh, we uh, international community can listen to that and can and can work with these people in crafting their own future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, before we come to the before we close the session, I would just like to read out. Debbie had to leave for a meeting, as I was saying earlier. And uh, although she has put it in the chat box, but as this session is being streamed live on Facebook pages also, so those people would not be able to read that chat message. So I would like to read her message where she has listed the demands of the movement. And Debbie says that our demands are to end the coup. This means power is restored to the civilian government, which is supposed to serve until April when it hands over to the newly elected government. Release all those detained, the politicians and human rights defenders, all those who have been jailed, they should be released. Abolish the 2008 constitution, which entrenches military power and perpetuates impunity. And uh, Mehu has just said what changes they want in the constitution. Also reform to a genuine federal democracy, impose targeted sanctions on military companies as an important source of pressure. She says we need to understand what is happening is a threat to regional human security, not just to Burma. The military has been attacking civilians even during the COVID-19 pandemic. Ethnic health posts have been destroyed and humanitarian assistance blocked even before the coup. So with Debbie's message, we come to the end of today's session and uh, my sincere thanks to all those men, persons from Myanmar who could join us despite the problems they are facing. Special thanks to May U and Debbie, to Katie Wynn and to Luen Luen Thant. And as I said earlier, one of the outcomes of the session would be a regional statement based on discussions of today, which will be drafted with the help of uh, Constanza Ruprecht and uh, we once again reaffirm our solidarity with the people of Myanmar who are protesting peacefully against an unjust military regime. And as has been said by Saida Deepji, we shall overcome. Together we shall overcome. Thank you very much for your support. And thanks also to all the supporters and all the voices from different parts of Asia who are there in this time of darkness and as Mehu says, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank Namaste. You. Thank you. Namaste.